Summer is golden. Hi guys, Jessica Norman. This is Summer is Golden. Hey designers, check this out. It's like day 12, you know, we've been out here for a minute and we kind of ran out of staples, you know how that is. And me and Alice went out and took care of some of the uh, essentials. But you know me, I love ribs. They had a rib sale again. <laughs> so we're gonna throw a couple on the grill. Hey, there's been a lot of talk going around the web about the chili pot that we threw on for y'all last episode, or two episodes back. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, they, they, <laughs> they suggested that the finished product didn't look like how it started, so we did something. Lean so we're gonna go ahead and do another one for, for y'all today. And uh, let me see. Where's the egg? Come on, girl. Right there. You see the pot? That's what it's gonna be in, right? You see what's in that pot? Vasa. Vasa. If you ain't start off with a pot of Vasa, it ain't chili. I'm sure what nobody tell you. And I ain't even getting no ingredients. I ain't even think about the chili pot till I was on my way back. So I ain't got nothing but leftovers and scraps. It's gonna be just as good as if it came from Jackson Jill's Atlanta. You remember them? Chili stock with beef. We don't play. Play. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that, add some pork uh, along with it, and we might even chip some chicken because we killed some chicken yesterday and we was doing some work and we forgot about it and it's a little dry. So we'll chop up some chili and throw in that pot too. I mean, uh, chicken and throw in that pot too. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and throw a little veggies on, a little bell, a little onion, and, and, and um, some, some fresh tomatoes off up in there and get it ruined and stewing. And uh, we'll be back and let y'all ride along with us. So let's get this grill lit and then we can move on. We're gonna do it the quick and easy way. Take a peek. Let me see if we can do this. This is uh, this is my broken tripod, y'all. I'm just trying to make it, trying to see if we can do a little something for me. Don't look like that's gonna happen today. So, I have to buy one. Let's see if we can put it right here. That almost fits. Let me give you a slight look. How about that? That's the modern way to light the grill. <laughs> I need to get a little I mean, uh, lighter fluid. I'm gonna go ahead and do that sweet potato on the grill. I might wrap it. I might wrap it in some foil. It kind of helps it cook faster. Uh, we're gonna have the turnip, French style string bean that, that we made last night. And um, I wanna get rid of these Idaho's in this pan because the pan has not been refrigerated. It was just in the cooler. So this is probably the last spill. I might throw some pasta in, some elbow mac with it just to give it texture. I mean, you know, uh, sweet potatoes probably enough starch, but you know, I'm gonna try to get rid of that. And you know me, they had a pizza there on sale for three something. Oh, I couldn't just let it sit there in the marketplace. So but I all I got is the Omega XL, but we can't let the pizza sit around cause there's no refrigeration. So we're gonna cook that pizza tonight. We'll have a slice, we're gonna cook it now. Soon we, soon we get everything else going, we're gonna throw the pizza on in pieces because you can't cook it, the oven's too small. It's just a little Omega XL. So I'm gonna break the pizza down and I don't know if I'm gonna build it or not. I probably won't. If I have some scraps left over, when I go in here and sit down, I'm gonna do the salad. That's so I'm gonna put the uh, eggs on just as I finish with the uh, uh, charcoal over here. I'm gonna throw the eggs on. They'll be cooking. Uh, I, I love uh, eggs in my. Every time I have a salad, it's gotta be close to a chef salad. It's gotta be real close to that, otherwise it's not a salad. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, we're gonna do that and um, get back with you guys. So as soon as this thing gets sparked out, we'll throw the eggs on and we'll come back and and uh, see you guys in a few. Now, where are those beans? Now, for those of you chefs out there who are gonna be appalled by what I'm about to do, hey, look, I ain't got time to be washing no dog on beans and all that. We can clean them, we can wash them with water, and we're gonna throw them right on in the pot and let them float. When, the, when the, um, the bad ones float, we're gonna take them off. And we'll do that before we do the veggies, just to give the beans an opportunity to breathe. But that'll be after the eggs. We've got great northerns and red beans this time. So, I love great northerns. So, you know, some folks don't like anything in their chili, but, but kidney so, beans. Real but... simple, just a bit of garlic and you know, sodium, and give all that some flavor and as a topping. My little pizza. I keep forgetting it's a little tiny pizza. Uh, kind of going overboard here. 
didn't get one of the super matches. But they weren't on sale. <laughs> That's hot. That fire is anyway. Let's turn that down a piece. Yeah. And we're gonna let those both beans cook a minute and create us a nice blue base. Meantime, we'll go ahead and chop up the ingredients for our little pizza. Throw that on because I'm hungry. Well, I'm having a I'm back and forth and all over the place because I'm hungry. Keep this wood ready. Well, we'll see you inside the stay tuned. So anyway, that is your water pot to keep it in. Northern thing. You know how I don't like uh, uh, supreme pizzas with the black olives and the mushrooms and the whole nine of those. But we didn't we didn't get any of that now, so we just we wouldn't expect them in here. We could just scoop the pizza up at the last minute. And I've never bought a pizza that I did that I that I enjoyed straight from the store. So that's what we're doing now. We're just gonna stack her, rack her, and cut her up and make her fit in our mega egg flip. Our mega power exit. Alright guys, let's get it done. Okay, and we're not even trying to be greedy or nothing, you know, it's just everything was on sale. What are you gonna do? Can't leave it in the store. <laughs> I mean, three dollars for a pizza pie like that. We already had an onion and bell pepper going in our chili pot. So hey, we can't leave it sitting around because we only have a, a cooler. So we're gonna add some sausage and beef here. Only got one hand. That's right, five broken. Well, some might say me go. I will tell you what, without mushrooms, and black olives, it's not even real pizza. <laughs> We're gonna add our eggs to our salad and move on, guys, to the next one. So we're going, guys. Okay, guys, real quick before we go in and start this salad, we got a pot of water. We got our great northern beans. We got the red kidneys inside. We're gonna bring those out. Uh, we got some chili ready tomatoes, but we're gonna boil in some tomatoes so I can get the three. So we put one of them in the salad and then we throw the rest in the chili pot. Uh, we got your basic seasoning, your chive. Got a little bit of that complete. It's got a lot of garlic in it and I've got a lot of powder. And uh, a little garlic pepper left and some sweet and smoky rub. I'm gonna use for the ribs, I'm gonna use it in my chili too with the lemon pepper seasoning. And it's, it's gonna be delicious. I ain't gotta tell y'all. Y'all know that. That pot right there, because I just happened to be walking past the uh, seafood aisle and they had uh, some plastic crab legs for like $4 a pound. So I grabbed me a cluster too. And uh, we're gonna put them on late night because you know we're gonna those the way overnight. So we'll put those on late night before we go to bed and catch some crab. All right, so we're gonna get uh, our charcoal ready to get in the grill. It was gonna be a good smoke. It's hot though. So we'll go ahead and dump that inside, get that going, and we'll put the eggs on. So we'll see you guys inside. Everybody. Summer's going, guys interested in asking me about seasoning pots look it's your pot and if you're cooking for you season how you want to if you're cooking for other people be careful about how much sodium you put in it flavor is one thing but sodium is not flavor people think it is because if they don't, if they don't have no salt on it they don't taste like nothing right but yeah but sodium is an enhancer and it should be used just for enhancement i'm gonna throw in a liberal amount of uh, old bay and we're gonna throw the chili powder in there Get that ruin up <clears throat> and we'll hit the flour toward the end so we can set the roof. Now I'm getting to that point where salt is an issue. So I'm gonna be backing off here. Just trying to toss a little bit of flavor. And let's go get that chili powder. I like that because it had the rub, it has uh, paprika in it. And then our trusty garlic. Don't need to be a conservative. That's flavor. Flavor is okay. Salt is a no no. Now, when you get to the end of the pot, you'll be doing your last tastings, and that's when you'll determine whether or not you have enough salt. I'm gonna get those kidney beans in there. And of course, we got us a pack of Miss Lara's lean, 92% lean. And we got some pork as well. Just right for us. Those are my uh, country style ribs. I had to have a taste of. They were on sale as well. When I catch a sale, I'm gonna probably buy. So they can just put a sale sticker on something. It's probably five cents more than what it was yesterday. <laughs> and because they got a sale sticker out there, I'm buying it. All right, they go to eggs for the salad. So it's gonna race first. As soon as that finishes, then we're gonna throw this pot of chili on and get it going here and make this salad. Excuse my mess out here on the table because it was raining last night. I just didn't clean up behind. 
the storm. Cause I'm out here and I'm trying to do this quickly. I'm the only one eating, so I ain't worried about it. Okay. Alice might take a bite. She's in there licking on the dog on meat while I'm <laughs> I had to donate. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. All right, so that's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna get this pot going and ruin it. Get the vegetables chopped up to throw in. And once we have a seasoned pot, we'll add our vegetables and our start the root balance because those uh, beans will start bouncing back against us and we'll know just where the root balance is and we'll be on our way. Summer's golden, guys. See, ladies, I'm trying to beat these flies. I'm, I'm surprised they're not after me. But I always try to get my garlic on first before I put any other salt-based, sodium-based ingredient. From. Um, you know what I'm trying to say? Kind of, you know, um, seasoning. So any other salt-based seasoning goes on with the garlic. Get a little salt base. And maybe even some garlic pepper. It's a little bit of sodium in there, so you gotta be careful. I don't have high blood pressure, but that's how you get it. <laughs> Not watching your sodium intake. So forth. Okay. Just trying to get a little flavor going there. Just a wee bit. Flip it. Like I like, like this, like this one. That one's kind of whitish looking. Those don't cook up very well. Uh, the, the slower you cook it, the better that it is for those. But it's, it's like as if they, they they lack oxygen before death or something. I don't know. I'm probably not even close to being correct. But it it appears to me that blood drains from the body too rapidly for it to respond um, like the reddish color was. The oxygen was around a little longer. Uh, and it was able to maintain some all right i thought the camera was rolling guys <laughs> it's really difficult to cook on these grills especially if you're going to have enough charcoal in there to actually do the job i've got some of that hot country that country brick it that's some really good charcoal i think it's better than king's Smokes really well. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get those bean shells off of our pot and prepare to start the roux. I'm gonna start the roux early and uh, add the. Uh -uh. I'm gonna start the roux early and add the vegetables just just that because I like my vegetables crisp. And um, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna because I'm gonna drop the meat too pretty soon. It's getting late, so I'm gonna go ahead and start start the roux. I needed to put some hot sauce in there. Let's see if we can get a little bit in there. It don't have to be hot, but I'm still used to making mild too. Yeah, no. So we're gonna get those holes off. Uh, we gotta get this done quickly because it's getting late. See you in a moment, guys. All right, guys, just so you can see. It barely fit in the Omega XL drawer. That was a 12 inch. Medium. Very good fit in the Omega XL. Cool, huh? So anyway, there it is, a market, market side Kalua pork recipe. Traditional crust. Caught it on sale, had to have it. That's a 12 ounce side, man. Mm -hmm. And we added some pork and beef. We didn't do the chicken. We're gonna save that. We got plenty of opportunity for the chicken. We'll be all night with this pot of chili. Not really, because we're going to start our roux here in a few minutes. And we'll push it along with some pancake mix. That's right. That's how we're going to get a quick roux out of it. 
we ain't got all day. So, this is what? Pizza, 380, 370. Well, it should be four something, but I think it can handle that. We'll see how that turns out. All right, Zion. <clears throat> all right, Zion. We got the veggies cut. The Omega XL brought my pizza. We're getting ready to check it out anyway. <laughs> and uh, we just dropped the um, we just dropped the uh, roux assist. I had to use some pancake mix and a little bit of mustard. And we just dropped that, so that's the color. We're gonna let these beans beat around a little longer. Then we're gonna drop some meat um, and the rest of the vegetables in there. And we'll let this pot come to a head. It might be a little premature on the beans, so I'm gonna let it rumble a bit. I can't gauge the exact temperature, but it's probably a little lower than what I need. Oh man, my meat. Yeah, we done killed it. We done killed the dead. <laughs> Just a little blackened. It's Cajun ribs. <laughs> but they're not burnt. They're not burnt at all. They're smoking just right. Let me see. Turn, I'll leave it up. Just sizzle a few, and then we'll come and stack them out the way, and let the smoke do the cooking. Let this blaze in the fire. These are going to get quick, get done quickly. So there's going to be just a small window of time. If you let them stay just a hair too long, you be talking about dog food. Especially this slab I got on the back right here. I can't forget and not come back. Cause that bad boy is just about done his day. Okay, so the pot's rumbling. Let's go cut into this pizza. I can't find my pizza knife. So I gotta do it old fashioned. Put these veggies out the way here. Let's see if I can cut it old fashioned. Look, right here on this seat. Be back. Sorry, I forgot to let you guys watch. <laughs> but it cut up pretty good. Maybe if I had the stain on it and pulled it. Two minutes earlier, I wouldn't have this burnt cheese. You know I hate burnt cheese. Well, I think other than that, it's a pretty good pizza pop. I'm gonna grab a salad, the rest of the plate, and I'll see you guys in a minute. Finally, lunch. It's almost dinner time, and we're just now getting lunch. <laughs> so I guess we're gonna stay up late on purpose. That's what I call a chef salad. That's the type of salad you pay $10 for. Ah, uh, what are we talking about? Yeah, we could add some pineapple. We'll wait till later. Let's, let's see how good this pizza is. Peace out, guys. Hey, in case you're wondering, guys, that was an awesome pie. It's a little bit burnt in that pie way exit. Next time, we'll go for 12 minutes. All right, let's go tend to our pot. All righty. Okay. Might be dropping some meat here. I want to drop it before I do the veggies. Somebody got a dog chained up over there all day. Just tripping. Okay, it's very hot. I need to chop off now so that roux can take effect. We'll probably pull a few more holes out. That's why I'm trying to get them off the bottom. Because it's sticking a little bit. Yeah, beans are looking good. Oh yeah, we dropped the kidneys in too. They in there, top, top rocking. And then we're gonna drop some meat. Let's go ahead and get this meat out of harm's way. Yeah, because we done about killed it. We done about destroyed it. Pull it all over this way and let it rest a little. Yeah, yeah. It's just about what you want, though. Yeah, that's about. Just trying to lay these, look on these. A couple of country cuts, they got done. I might as well put them up top. Yeah, cause they turning into mush, mishmash over there. Yeah, I don't want that. You don't want mishmash. These will just let turn over the fire. Or a lean. Come back and check on those. Oh yeah, when I pull these bad boys, we we'll eating on ribs for the next week. So we ain't got two weeks left out here. So. Yeah, so. Oh. Somebody kind of spun up here in a boat yesterday. I was looking at them like, 
<laughs> you ain't catch nothing in here. There ain't nothing in this mud with turtles. You got to go out there to the lake where the dam is. You're going to have to go around there. Once we get this trailer dealt with, and we can work with that. So I'm holding off. I didn't want to buy an axle until I know I can't get one from around here. It's such a novel thing. But I bought a puller, so I'm going to try to pull that hub. If I can pull that hub and, that, and the axle's not damaged, okay. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> I don't know what y'all talking about, but we definitely, definitely going to go and fix that. The poor dog. I don't know what they in there doing. He can't untie the dog. All right, guys. We're going to let this pop crone. It's about to be dark. As you can see, the animals will be out here pretty soon lurking. All these pots are going. And I got nowhere to put this stuff. It's going to be 107 degrees. Why do I do this? Why do I do it? Don't worry, we're gonna find a place to, to, to refrigerate everything. We gotta go out for ice every day till this stuff is gone because uh, this shit is getting ready to be superb. But you know, we gotta take care of it. It's getting ready to be superb. Ta -ta -ma. Yeah, now this is the bean rule period. See? Oops. You gotta point the camera at the pot. This is the bean rule period right here. Gotta get a little bit of sticking down there, but. Mm hmm. There was a couple of holes right there. Mm -hmm. Y'all see them? Let the cat go hunt for them. <laughs> she ate my she ate my pancakes that uh, day. Whoever I'm saying she could be a he. Kidney's looking good too. I'm pretty satisfied. So we're gonna let this bean root take effect. We don't need a lead, but don't need a lid for that process. We're gonna clean up this cup. All right, I'll be back and we're gonna drop some meat and keep my eye on my grill. So I'm gonna go, guys. Okay, well, we did it again, guys. We did it again. And the battery on this camera is about to die, so we're gonna end dinner early. Just know that it's going to be enjoyable. And as I was about to say, we did it again. We now have Cajun chili. <laughs> yeah, we put a little burn on the bottom there and uh, the aroma's changing. So that's what we're doing now. Cajun chili, guys, get on board. Get on board. <laughs> we're going to drop this meat and turn in these vegetables and leave it at that. And I trust you guys, trust me to get in there properly. But I only have one hand. So good night, Zioners. I'll let you know how the pot turned out tomorrow. Hey Zioners, good morning. You're looking quite messy today. However, I have thrown my line in to start day 13. I added a expensive lure because those guys that were in here the other day, they were on a, um, what do you call those? Uh, sort of racing boat looking fishing boats. And they were just casting their lines as though they were trout fishing, as though they were using a, um, a, fly, a fly line. Of course it wasn't, it was a regular reel line, but that's the manner in which they were um, casting. They were just, and I can see they had a large lure on the end, so I'm thinking that lure fishing around here is probably bringing some excitement. That they, they seem to be pretty crafty gentlemen, like as though they had uh, been successful at some point on this lake. I mean, why, why buy a twenty thousand dollar boat just to hang out in the lake? But um, so I'm trying a lure today. Hopefully, we get a bite. Um, unfortunately, I turned my back on the ribs. <laughs> they just way too much. What? Way too done for me. Let's put it that way. I can't even. I can't even. <laughs> I do not eat meat like that. But that's that's what they are. I mean, if you, if you, if you go to a restaurant for ribs, that that's what you'll get drenched in sauce, basically, because they have to cook it all the way. And you know I me, mean, I, I don't like uh, meat that's overcooked. If it's not fleshy when you eat it, I'm not talking raw or rare. I'm talking fleshy, nothing but moisture. When you bite into a piece of any meat, you should, all you should get is moisture. You shouldn't be dry, chew nothing. And if it is, it's not cooked properly. It's just that simple. Bad cut, good cut. If you cook it, time the temperature properly. Now, you gotta gauge it differently for different cuts of meat and so forth. And you don't always get it right unless you just know the game. But <laughs> at the end of the day, time and temperature tells all. I think I had a little dangle there. I just got my bell going. Oh yeah, remember what I was saying? Well, anyway, I was probably talking to myself and I was talking about how long I had the bell for 20 years, so I better watch out. And as I was having this conversation with myself, <laughs> I, this is a couple days ago. I cast the line and something said, whoop. <laughs> I said, damn, the bait came off. <laughs> then I started looking and I saw something shiny in the water. I'm glad it was a shot that, that it is shallow out here. And I saw it and I got the net and drug her back in. So we done lost the bell once. So we got to remember to remove the bell 
for a casting and, and removal. <laughs> well, we got new campers. Did I tell you guys yesterday, we got a new set of campers just on the other side of this door to set. We got one down in there about 40 yards. And we're gonna be stacked up. I imagine when the holidays are booming and everything, this place is probably jumping. I don't know. As far as you can probably see with this camera right there, that's where the next campsite is. <laughs> All right, come on, man. This is not camping. You might as well stay home. Your neighbors is far further away than that in most cases. But that's how they do it. The chili came out nice. Uh, probably needed some more chili powder. So a little light on the powder. Uh, spicy. Um, because of the Valentina Mexican hot sauce. I like that. But other than that, I made some catfish bait this morning because the, that cat or the cat family that's around here, they came and took my, they came and took my bait. I don't know why they want to eat something like that, but, but it's pretty simple to make. You just need some chicken liver and some flour. Uh, if you've got some sardines or something, you can chop up some sardines in it or another type of fish, herring or any other type of fish you have around. You know, some crab meat, if that's all you got in the fridge, take that. But don't use any water because there's moisture enough in the ingredients. If you can't get a good blend, put it in a blender. It's going to be tough because, you you know, a blender a blender's not like a dough maker. If you got a dough machine, that's where you want to put it. Put in the dough machine, it's gonna knead it properly and get that, uh, uh, all the liver chopped up in it. And I was gonna say, you could blend, blend the liver first. I didn't because my blender's doing that. That's why we didn't have a smoothie, you know me and my smoothies. But we have a smoothie because I'm sitting up in here and I'm thinking there's a rat in the rig, right? He just, I'm like, well, I know this mother ain't bought his. And I'm about ready to just start tearing, you know, <laughs> well, you probably don't know me on that note. <laughs> but me and my dogs, we do not play with animals in our wilds and stuff. We don't do that. No, we don't do that, we, we handle that. So anyway, um, I thought it was a rat. Then I get down on my knees and I'm listening. And I'm standing next to it or kneeling next to the uh, blender. And I'm hearing and smelling. It's going on inside the blender. While if I leave that thing plugged up, come back, house probably be gone. That's another thing about kneeling. Another aha moment with Jessica Norman. Y'all got it. Leaving appliances, especially stuff bought in the past 10, 15 years from China. That stuff, I'm, I'm not giving an, or placing an indictment on, Gi on, on China. On China. But they know it. That's all they make is cheap stuff to get it out fast. They trying to get rich. They ain't got time to be, you know, running up behind nothing. Every All these little tiny USB this and that and the third. These lithium battery systems and so forth that you're putting all around your house. It's Chinese brand crap. Eventually, it has very high potential to start a fire. So don't be utterly surprised if your house burns down because you had some USB nightlight plugged in a wall that's not UL certified. <clears throat> and none of that crap really is. Even if it has the stamp on there, it's not really getting quality inspected piece by piece. Well, nothing it receives that type of attention, but at the same time, there's more of a process for American goods. But who buys American goods anymore? That's, that's the worst thing, to, that's the worst question to have to ask. Here we are in 2024, racism is still one of the most prevalent social forces in throughout the country, okay? And American jobs don't exist. What the hell kind of America is this? Who left this to me? How did I leave this to my grandkids? It's just, it's painful to think about, but this is who we are and what we've become. And learning how to be a rural creature is going to be paramount. It's, it's a big country, you know. I mean, if we all spread out across this great land, we'd still bump into each other. It's not that big. We'd still bump into each other. But we could all have a piece of land, a plot of land that was all our own. But how would these major corporations dominate us? And once, once technology has taken them to a place where they own every one of our moments now, from the time we wake, even during sleep, they own that time. If you don't believe me, just look, especially if you own an iPhone, just do a little research on your phone. I'm not going to tell you anything. And you'll see just how much that phone is really a part of you. It is, it is an extension of you, you know? And when you turn on that find my phone function, it's like a little robot that you can't leave behind. <laughs> where are you? I'm not near you anymore. You know, you can't open apps until you prove it's really you because you're not where you're supposed to be. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's a level of surveillance we have never known. But China has taken it 12 to 15 steps further. Every one of their citizens, like a pin on a, uh, on a, on a, on a map, they are tracked everything they do, everything they consume, everything. That's, that's how China is dominating the world market. That the, the same tools that we've used against our own constituency for so long, accounting. You know, the only, one who, the only ones who really do real accounting are, are big business. Big business account for every single penny. Every half penny is accounted for in big business. That's why you could never beat big you could never beat big business. You can't start a business that's already dominated by a big business and expect to take the market share unless the market share doesn't really belong to that big business. And that's rare. Most big businesses know where they are in their market, how they're in it, and how to maintain equilibrium within that market. 
They know this. They've studied it. This is what they do. It's what they, it's what they do with their time. That's how you protect your money. So we can't be ashamed or appalled that that's what they're doing. This is a capitalistic society. You asked for this. You wanted this. You strove for it. It has become your baby. And now the result of it, not educating anybody to do anything in the market substantially, is going to be the reason America fails. Big business thinks that it can do the opposite by just, but no. You have to keep the world market interested in your products. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the world already has a problem with America. If America shows any sign of weakness, you had best believe the world is coming for us. So we better start getting together. We better start shooting down the rhetoric and stop letting people divide us and come together and form a base of intelligence to mobilize ourselves up out of the nonsense. Doesn't mean to become greater consumers. We should be consuming less. We should have lighter footprints across, across the globe. And there's all kinds of ways to do it. Camping might be considered one of them. <laughs> However, I have found that trying to beat the power companies using methods like this one is improbable. And that's kind of the, the reasoning for my explanation about big business. I, I said this a few days ago. I called myself, I'm getting off the grid. I'm, I'm gonna go out here for at least a few months. And I'm, yeah. I spent three, almost four times as much as I would have spent sitting right there on my couch. I could have stayed home, saved that money, and went on a real trip later. Caught a flight to see the Redwoods. You know, I spent more than $20,000 from the time this vehicle was first purchased to now. And I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, people don't realize <laughs> a lot of times why they're out there spending and, and, and buying and stuff that they had no value. As soon as the crisis hits, you'll see just how small the, the value of what you purchased is. Anything you purchase is not really valuable. I don't even care about the things they call antique, the things that they assign value to in that manner. Because if you ain't got nothing to eat anywhere on the planet, it's probably not gonna happen for quite some time. But if you didn't, gold wouldn't mean crap. I don't care what they tell you. You can't eat gold, baby. <laughs> and that's why they've dominated the food market. You can't buy seeds that you don't have to replenish uh, after two years. You, you know, they're not gonna continue to, to uh, bring crops. These companies called Monsanto, I hate to name their names, they might come looking for me. Anyway, these big companies that, that have bought into the agricultural, what is that, uh, uh, um, what is that one that everybody talks about? That one, ConAgra. <laughs> I don't care, they can come for me. Bayer, you know, the pharmaceuticals. These people are not here to help you get well. They don't give a shit about you. It's about profit. It's about turning profit. And you can't turn profit for healing cancer. You know, you can't turn profit for creating drugs that heal you. That after four or five visits, you're done. No, they're going to make sure they give you something that's going to keep you coming back. That's how this game works. It you know, always work that way. Any hooligan from Brooklyn. We are in a stressful time of consideration. My summer is golden family. Uh, we're probably going to be canceled at the end of this season because the network has determined that we do not have the viewership to maintain space on their network. That's why I can't upload videos for three or four days. Just sitting around 50%, 28%. Come on now. As much as money, as much as, as much money as I have spent on internet, I should be able to get on top of the internet, under and through it. It just doesn't make any sense. And, um, so because we have become completely unprofitable to the point where uh, we've exhausted our own resources trying to maintain the value and the, and the integrity of Summer is Golden, guys, we are going to say salute at the end of this season. So just be prepared for what's coming. You probably aren't watching this video until way off into August or September after we, we return from this long journey. We're going to reestablish better internet <laughs> from our prison cell at home which is what they have provided for us. That's why you can't get internet out. They want to center you. They want to centralize all of America in these communities. You know, you would think that if they really wanted that, they would have created the, the reasonable value for citizenship, for, for civility amongst the races, but they didn't do it. They didn't do it. They maintained all the nonsense and the division as if it was the most valuable thing. They pushed every narrative They created that space, just like the, the Democrat and the Republican thing. None of us are Democrats or Republicans. That's all crap. It's all crap. It's just a game. Why there's, only, it's a, why there's only two? And then those two don't really control anything. <laughs> you know? Let's not get into that. I said we wouldn't talk politics or religion, and we shall not. So, any hooligan. We're going to move on, guys. We've not gotten a bite this morning. And we're going to get some breakfast on, our usual. We've got strawberries left over from the salad last night, so we're going to have strawberry pancakes. We're going to have eggs. And there's no need for bacon, because there's enough pork around here to dog on start a farm. So we're going to have some some um, ribs. We'll probably just take uh, a couple of those country style and mix it with a couple of the baby bags and put it in a pot of sauce, half pot of sauce, and I'm gonna waste our sauce like that. And just heat them up that way, get a little moisture back into the meat. Just boy, did I dry them out. Um, 
And that's all we're gonna do today. We're gonna, uh, that's not all we're gonna do. That's all we're gonna do this morning for breakfast. Uh, but just after we're gonna get started on the, on the trailer because we're running out of time and I'm not sure what's gonna have to happen. I don't wanna leave her out here. Uh, after pricing trailers yesterday, a uh, trailer this size brand new was $8,200. This is not brand new, but for $300, I can make it like brand new. So I may do that, or I may just replace the hub. I'm gonna try to get it off today. I may let you guys hang around and see that. I may not. And then we're gonna go and try and upload uh, the last episode that we're still stuck in. Uh, and um, we'll get back with you guys when there's something more exciting to do. Like when we cut the watermelon, we've been promising you that. So, summer's going, guys. Check this out, Zion is. I wish I'd have showed y'all this before the line went out. Remember that? Well, you, that's right, you didn't get to see it. I had a lure on here with, remember those big bug-eyed black fish that they find in goldfish tail? We call them, uh, there's, it's some type of, it's got a name. <laughs> but it was bigger than that, than the average one of them big buggers. That's how big this lure was. It was like a big guppy with two big, like three quarter inch um, treble hooks on it. And I packed it with the liver bait. They took the whole system. It didn't get snagged on nothing. It was just gone. We just gone. I couldn't believe that the whole line from the weight down, they, it's like they probably wrapped around something and, and got away. It might have been a big fish. Could be a big turtle. That's amazing. That's awesome. Well, hats off to the um, to the fish of of this vast lake here. Ah, oh, how about that? I bet you that mushroom a kid did. I know how exotic mushrooms can be very good, but you don't ever try a mushroom in the fit. Ooh, it's cleaning the life, wasn't it? Some some of them you don't even touch. So unless you got the book <laughs> or something to explain to you, which I wouldn't mess with them as much as I love mushrooms. All right, guys. Peace out. Hey, Zioneers. Still day 13. And that weird truck still stopping me. Every day I see him when I went to the supply yesterday, he was there. He's got three dogs in the back of the truck. It's like one of those dog catcher trucks. And he just had them swimming in the lake. But since I got here, this dude, he's, he's been creeping around through the campsite. So either he works here, there's no way that he's just renting a campsite and, uh, you know, just riding around like that with those three dogs. You know, that's just a little weird. So I'm, I'm thinking either the guy works here, he's some sort of unofficial security or something. Or there's something weird going on with him. He's tracking me. But anyway, excuse me. And it was the inner, the inner uh, bearing that came apart. It just disintegrated. There were pieces of the bearing inside the hood. But the hood looked like it's in a pretty decent condition. Good enough to repack it. So I, I'm either going to do that or I'm going to get another hood. I'm going to try to clean this up real good. Put a little sandpaper to it to keep throwing it out. It's, you know, it's 100 bucks for a hub, it's 40 bucks for the uh, bearing. So just clean this up. Clean it up and then put new bearings on it for 40 bucks and be done. That's what my plan would be. Instead of buying a new hub for a trailer, I'm not ready to be using like that. And I was about to be using it. And how I ended up. Uh, don't let me try and lie and say that uh, if I. Uh, was, if I knew I was going to take it all the way to the red woods, I would have done more work. No, that's not true. If, you know, I was planning to take it until the, the economic, I'm sorry, the financial breakdown set us away from the red woods. I was taking the train to stay just as we were. So we'd, we would have broke down somewhere along the road, probably on the side of the interstate. That's where we would be right now, trying to contemplate all of this from day to day. So I'm grateful that we chose a nearby campsite for our first uh, journey. And I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that everything the truck driver that uh, caught me and, and pulled me over. Everything that set the wheels in motion to make this happen. And like I said, I was contemplating a $300 placement. And it looks like we're going to be able to avoid that for now. But as you can see, these things are, are rusty bad. Eventually, you're going to have to replace the whole axis. But you can go to a junkyard and just, you know, any any type of anything, whether it's a whether it has a differential or not, you can still take it off and use it, strap it to the bottom of this metal. That's uh, a axle suspension system. So we're gonna just go ahead and finish taking this off, and we're gonna go get on, get on the horn, and find out.
be able to pull that race right on off of that. going to take this thing back but I think now I'm going to keep it because it's proven to be worth its weight. I don't know if this will be the last cup I'll pull. It sure helps for the first one so your race. That is the removal of the hub and bearing set process. I hope I didn't forget to show y'all the beginning when I started. But if I did, you see that? That is the outer. How do you say that? That is, okay, this is the outer. See the left one. This is the outer. And anything over on that side with the inner. Like the inner dust cover I knocked out on. This is a race. You see it in there, inside the hole there? That's a race. But the race that the actual bearing seat in, they're already uh, inside of the new bearing, right? So the new bearing will have the, the race the bearing seat in, and it'll have this cover race. That's what that is, that's the outer, the outer of this outer <laughs> uh, bearing race. So when you take that out, then the, then the one pre-assembled uh, uh, bearing will slide right in there. So that's all you gotta do is do some 400 grit, Clean that up real good so it will slide directly. You don't want to do too much sanding because if you do it, you make it too big, then the bearing doesn't fit in It's too big and it's going to get tore up. Shit, you know, 10 miles, man. Like, all this stuff is machined precisely for a reason. You know, be real careful. If you're going to jeopardize it like that, then why well, pay 40 when you destroy it? You might as well just pay 89 for the already packed and pre-sealed. Um, uh, uh, so, yeah, all right, this should be the spender. Or is that the spender? That's the ass. This must be the hub. Uh, the spindle might be the end of the action. One of them is the spindle, one of them is the hub. That's the spindle. But I get the juice. Tell you I'm not that smart.